All right, so we will get started. All right, like I said, my name is Katie. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Rutgers Camden. So thanks so much for coming today. I'm just gonna go over some of the things that we can offer you here at Rutgers Camden, some of my favorite parts about working here. Um, we were founded in 1929. So we actually have been around for quite a long time. Um, we merged with the Rutgers State University of New Jersey in 1950 to become what is Rutgers University. Um, we have 5,000 undergraduate students. That is something I always like to highlight. We are the smallest and southernmost campus of um, the Rutgers system. So we are located in South Jersey. That small campus that we have um, is something that we're really proud of here at Rutgers Camden because we can really offer students that one on one attention within the classroom. I'll talk about that um, a little bit more in a little bit. So we have four schools here at Rutgers Camden. We have the College of Arts and Sciences, everything from psychology to our education degrees, um, our languages, religion, um, all of those majors are housed within College of Arts and Sciences. We have a four year bachelor's of nursing program. And then we have a school of business as well. Um, within the school of business, we have some five year bachelor's and master's programs, um, some business administration programs, and we also have an online business administration program as well. Uh, we have no undergraduate programs within our law school, but many of our students will major in like criminal justice or something and move on into our law school. It's a pretty seamless transition. We are very, very proud of our faculty here at Rutgers Camden. So 99% of our faculty do have terminal degrees, um, meaning they do have the highest degrees in their field. Um, we do have a Pulitzer Prize winner on staff as well. Um, so that means that our professors are continuously out in the field doing research. So they're in the classroom and then they're also bringing everything they know out in the field to our students. Since we have such a small campus, we have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. So our students are working directly with these professors and getting these networking opportunities from day one at Rutgers Camden. Um, a lot of our students will actually graduate having already been published um, or presenting at major conferences with right alongside these professors. We have a very active campus life, and I'm so excited that we're you know, back in action this year. Um, if you look at this picture here, these are our students looking into the city of Philadelphia. So we are about a five minute train ride into Philadelphia. Um, so our students are very involved within that community, as well as the 100 plus student clubs and organizations that we offer at Rutgers Camden. Here's a little bit about our admissions process. Um, I won't go too in depth about it. Um, we have all of this information on our website, um, which I will put in the chat at the end of my, my part here. Um, but it's important to just look at our deadlines. We do have a deadline of November 1st. Um, this just guarantees that we can get you a decision by the end of January. And if you submit everything by December 1st, we can guarantee a decision by the end of February. These aren't hard deadlines. These are just you know, suggestions to give you a decision on a certain timeline. All right, so I always suggest that students fill out a FAFSA form for our financial aid. We offer gift aid, we offer state aid, um, federal aid will also come from that FAFSA form. Um, but this is a program that is unique to Rutgers Camp. It's called Bridging the Gap. Um, there is a chance that if you fall between any of these adjusted gross income brackets, we could potentially cover 100% of your campus fees and tuition. Um, so again, if you can just fill out that FAFSA form, you will be evaluated for this program. There's no extra application for this. Um, this is something that you know we're, we're also really proud to offer at Rutgers Camden, just to make college a little bit more accessible. All right, a combination of the um, faculty that we have, the campus life, that small campus feeling, all the financial benefits we can offer you. We have a 97% placement rate, meaning that 97% of our students are either fully employed or have moved on to a graduate program within six months of graduating from Rutgers Camden. We're also um, sitting at around an $87,000 average mid-career salary. So our students are getting jobs and they are you know, being paid well for them. So we're putting that at like seven to eight years into our students' careers. You're also entering a network of 500,000 alumni that are Rutgers University alumni. You're going to hear from New Brunswick in, in a little bit. We're really proud to be part of this whole Rutgers system because we really believe in this university and you're really entering that 
huge alumni network. Um, everyone has some kind of affiliation with Rutgers, uh, you know, some kind. So to even just having that Rutgers name on your resume goes a very long way. Um, so just to sum up here, some of my favorite parts of Rutgers Camden and some things we can offer you. We're, our, we're a small campus, big family. I can say that as a staff member, I can say that as a student, um, you're getting to know everybody on campus and in your class, getting those networking opportunities and really getting the best minds in the field. Um, we are very hardworking here at Rutgers. We have a, you know, that prestigious name comes with hard work. So we are, as student, staff, and faculty are very hardworking. Um, so surrounding yourself with others that um, have that same mindset can only help you grow throughout your college process. Um, and then knowledge above all, we have the best minds in the field here at Rutgers Camden. We're proud of our faculty, um, and that just will help our students um, get the, those jobs post-graduation. Um, I will put my direct email address as well as our admissions website in the chat. If you have any questions, feel free to email me directly or visit our website. We are here to support you through this process. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate you, uh, you coming today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Katie, for sharing a little bit more about Rutgers Camden. Uh, before I pass things off to our next institution, I do want to make a very quick plug for that Q&A. So if you have any questions for any of our presenters, whether you've already heard from them or you're still yet to hear from them, don't forget to send those in the Q&A throughout the session. No need to hang on to those till the end. Uh, but from here, we'll go ahead and introduce University of South Florida. Thank you. Let me get my screen there. All righty. Well, good evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about the University of South Florida. So just to introduce myself, my name is Chrissy Pugh. I'm the Regional Recruiter Advisor for New Jersey uh, with USF. So just an overview of the university. We were founded in 1956, so we are a relatively young university. Um, but even though we are young, we do maintain an overall enrollment of around 50,000 students, 37,000 of which are undergraduate students. So even though we're young, like I said, we have a big population of students, but we do maintain a 21 to 1 uh, student to faculty ratio and an average class size of around 33 students. So even though we do have a lot of students, we still have those small classroom environment. Um, USF really does pride itself on our diversity with 41% of our USF students coming from diverse backgrounds. And we do have students from all 50 states and 145 different countries um, on our campuses. We do offer close to 200 majors and concentrations across our 14 academic colleges. So odds are whatever it is you're looking for, we probably have it um, on USF's campus. We are America's fastest rising university. Um, we are now ranked 46 by US News and World Report, and we are very proud of this fact. Uh, fastest rising just means we are uh, making our way to the top through the rankings. So it just really proves that we are on the right trajectory. And USF is one university geographically distributed. So when I say USF, University of South Florida, I'm referring to all three of our campuses. So we have locations in Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Sarasota Manatee. Um, each campus offers something a little bit different, a little bit unique. You actually get to choose what campus you wanna to go to when you're applying. So Tampa, where lives live larger, uh, the big metropolitan city, when you think large public institution, um, that's gonna be our Tampa campus. This houses the majority of our academic majors as well as our student organization. If you're looking for something a little bit smaller, um, you can try out our St. Petersburg campus where city meets sand. So St. Petersburg is a beautiful beach town. So if you like outdoor recreation, you're wanting a smaller uh, campus environment, this might be the campus for you or Sarasota Manatee, that is going to be the smallest of the three campuses. So they have a uh, 13 to one student to faculty ratio. So if you're looking for a very tight knit community, um, Sarasota Manatee might be the campus for you. It's kind of like a private school feel, but for a public school price. So that's really nice. Um, in regards to student life, like I said, we do have over a thousand student organization and on-campus events. So you will definitely not get bored on campus. Um, we are in NCAA Division I Athletics. We play in the American Conference. So if you're looking for those college game days type of vibes, we do have that. But if you're interested in sports but don't necessarily want to play at that D1 level, we do have our recreation and intramural sports as well. 
The bull market is one of my favorite things about campus. So it happens each week on campus. Our student organizations will set up, different nonprofits or local organizations will come out. So again, you don't have to go very far to find these student organizations. They really come to you. Um, we do have a Publix on campus. If you're not familiar, Publix is a very popular grocery food or grocery store in the South, especially in Florida. So it's very convenient that we have one on our campus for our students. And then week of welcome happens the first week of every semester. So it's kind of helped you to kickstart, um, you know, each semester and get you excited for what's to come. Kind of changing gears now so to some freshman admissions information. So you could apply uh, right now. Our application is open on the Common App, Coalition App, or USF admissions website. Doesn't matter which one you choose, just whatever is easiest for you. Our application is pretty straightforward. We just need a $30 application, uh, application fee or a fee waiver, your high school transcript, and your official ACT or SAT test scores. That's it. Once you submit those three things, your application is complete. You're good to go. I've included our admitted freshman profile here to kind of show you um, what the average admitted student, what their GPA and what their test score was. So this is by no means the requirement for admissions, but just to give you a general idea, again, of what students who were accepted um, last fall and last summer, what their GPA and test score was. In regards to tuition and fees, so for an out-of-state student with you guys coming from New Jersey, your tuition and fees, you're looking at around $17,000 for the academic year. But when you include tuition, housing, books and supplies and others, you're looking at around $35,000 for the academic year. Now, that is a lot of money, yes, but we have some of the lowest rate uh, tuition rates in the country um, and very competitive out of state rates. Um, our rates are often the same, if not lower um, than a lot of the in state New Jersey schools are our non Florida university. So definitely something to consider because this is going to be a reoccurring expense. But one of the ways in which you could offset that tuition cost is going to be through scholarships and waivers. And we do offer waivers for our out of state students. That's going to be under that uh, non Florida resident column. So these are merit-based, so as long as you have the GPA and the test score, you automatically are going to get the scholarship, so long as you apply uh, before the deadline, which I'll get to. Um, but it starts with our scholars waiver with a 3.5 and a 1210, and then it goes up with our director and presidential award, and these are a four-year award amount. Kind of winding down now with our application deadlines. Um, the big deadline I want you guys to remember is to apply by December 1. Um, that's our priority application completion deadline. Um, if you don't make that December 1 deadline, you do have until January 15th to still be considered for scholarships. And then April 1st, that final application deadline. Um, and then May 1st, admissions deposit deadline. Let us know by that date if you're going to become a bull. But I know that was a lot of information. So if you have any other questions, here's my contact information. I'll put it in the chat as well. Um, or you could put that in the Q&A box too. So thank you guys for listening and go Bulls. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Christy, for sharing a little bit more about the University of South Florida. Uh, next, we'll hear from Old Dominion University. Good evening, everyone. Let me just get this pulled up for you all. Great. So my name is Ashley Rose. I'm an admissions counselor here at ODU and I'm also an alumni. Um, you guys can see on the screen, there is a QR code. So if you want ODU to send you more information about deadlines, events coming up, feel free to scan that, uh, fill out the information and also be at the end of the presentation. Uh, but basically, if you don't know about ODU, we were founded in 1930 as the Norfolk Division of William and Mary. And then in 1969, we gained university status. So we have nearly hundred years of history on our campus. Um, we are located, like I said, in Norfolk, Virginia. So that is the second largest city in the state of Virginia with Virginia Beach being the first. Um, we are only about 25 minutes from Virginia Beach Oceanfront. However, campus is surrounded by two rivers. We're close to the Chesapeake Bay. So if you're looking for a beach field, then I definitely recommend ODU for you. Uh, we also like to say that we're you know, in a metropolitan area. So the city of Norfolk is large but you get still that residential feel of uh, campus with it just being about 335 acres, essentially a giant rectangle where you can walk from one end of campus to the next in about 15 minutes. Uh, but I'll move on to the next slide. 
So our campus, we have about 24,000 students. That does include our undergraduate and graduate level students. Any given day, you'll probably see about 16,000 people walking around campus with about five to 6,000 people actually living on campus uh, due to just being in that city area. Uh, we do have a high commuter population. We do have eight different academic colleges, including an honors college and a brand new school of cybersecurity. And within those different academic colleges, we have 91 different degree programs for you to choose from. Uh, so those majors range anywhere from STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math, all the way to liberal arts. So dance, theater, music, there's a little bit of something for everyone here at ODU. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. Uh, so I like to tell students that when you first come in, your class sizes might be a little bit larger, especially if you're taking those general education courses like English, biology, chemistry, things like that, maybe 100 students in a lecture hall. Uh, but then once you get more into your major, your class sizes will be closer to that student to faculty, faculty ratio, probably about 20 to 25 students. And then the 35 that you see on the screen, that is the number of CHEV award winners that we have here um, on campus. So that is the highest award that faculty can earn in the state of Virginia, and we are second in the state. So here on campus, we have over 300 different clubs and organizations for our students to choose from. Those can range from community service, uh, anything to do with your major honors clubs, uh, just for fun. So I like to tell students that we do have a pancake eating club where they literally just get together and eat pancakes. Uh, we have women in engineering, um, again, those honor societies. So pretty much anything you can choose from. Um, if you can't find something that you're interested in, it's super easy to start your own. You just need three other friends and a faculty signature. We do have 30 plus fraternities and sororities on campus as well. Those range from social to service to multicultural. 15 different housing options. Those will be either apartment style or suite style. So apartment style is gonna be you and your roommate in the bathroom right within the room. And then suite style is kind of a Jack and Jack or Jill and Jill type situation uh, where you'll have you and your roommate bathroom in the middle and then your suite mates connecting that. So you, there are no communal bathrooms at ODU, which was kind of a big thing for me when I was looking at colleges. Um, then we have 17 different dining locations on campus as well. There's one, are you care to eat? a freestanding dining facility, two that are attached to our residence halls, and then several nationally recognized chains, uh, all scattered throughout campus and especially located in our student web center. So there's Chick-fil-A, Pizza Hut, Panda Express, Starbucks, uh, Steak and Shake, Cadoba. Um, yeah, there's a lot on campus, so you're definitely never gonna go hungry. Another point that I like to make on this slide is that we are at NCAA Division One. Uh, we are in Conference USA, so we have varsity level sports, but also club and intramural as well. Uh, within those varsity level sports at the D1 level, we have 18 different sports teams. Uh, we did just build a brand new football stadium about two years ago. Um, so we're super excited about that uh, because you know last year due to COVID, we weren't able to have any fall sporting events. So football has kicked back up and uh, you can definitely see it around campus. And then how to apply. So we submit, you can submit the application one of two ways, either on our website or through the Common App. So there is a $50 non-refundable application fee. Some deadlines to keep in mind, uh, December 1st is our early action. It is non-binding. December 1st is our, or excuse me, February 1st is our regular de decision. Some required items for the application include your official high school transcript. Um, we are test optional and last year we completely waived the GPA requirement for that and we are continuing that this year. However, if you do uh, decide to take the SAT or the ACT, we will accept that as well. And I always encourage students to submit that just because it'll place you in a higher priority for merit-based scholarship. Um, so on average, we look for about a 3.3 GPA, a 1080 SAT, and a 21 ACT. And then some optional pieces that you can submit along with those required items in the application um, include up to three letters of recommendation, a personal essay, and an activities resume. So here in Virginia, we are one of the most affordable uh, state colleges and the most affordable doctoral uh, college in the state of Virginia. So on average, 80% of our freshmen who do apply for financial aid will receive assistance. Um, so as you can see for out of state, the numbers on the screen, this is based on if you take 15 credits per semester. So that is five classes per semester, um, the numbers for on campus versus off campus. Um, again, filling out that FAFSA, if you're looking for the financial aid 
that does open up this Friday, October 1st. And then another deadline to keep in mind is January 1st, which is our priority filing date. If you guys have any questions about ODU, I'll go ahead and put my information in the chat. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Great, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about Old Dominion. Uh, next up, we have the University of Tampa. Oops, and Lindsay, you are on mute. Perfect, thank you. All right, let me just go ahead and share my presentation. All right, so hello everyone. I'm Lindsay Forrest, an admissions counselor for the University of Tampa. This is my email address that you can reach me at. I'll also at the end um, have my email posted on the last slide and I'll include my contact information in the chat. So here at the University of Tampa, we're a private independent liberal arts university. We're around a mid-sized university with just under 10,000 students. We have students from all 50 states and also students from over 130 different countries. So we have a very dynamic learning experience, we like to say, for our students here. And you can build relationships with people from all over the world. We are an NCAA Division II university. We do recruit all of our athletes. So if you're interested in playing a sport, please fill out the recruitment form on our UT website. But we do say that our university does have an urban environment with a campus feel. So what we mean by that is you are right in the heart of downtown Tampa. As you can see in the photo, there's our campus, and then we, our campus is separated from downtown Tampa by a nice natural barrier of the Hillsborough River. So you have downtown that you can experience, enjoy, walk around in, while also being able to come back to your home base here on campus. So none of our buildings are scattered throughout the city. We are all one central campus that only takes about 10 minutes to walk end to end. So on our academics end of things, so we are a mid-sized university, around 10,000 students again, but we like to have that small school feel. So our average class size is around 22 students per classroom and the faculty to student ratio is one to 17. I personally came here to UT. This was something I looked for coming from a small high school. This is what I really enjoyed was knowing that the class sizes are going to be similar. So it was much easier to adapt to these class sizes. Now 90% of our faculty do have a PhD or terminal degree in their field. And also important to note that none of our classes are taught by any graduate assistants or teaching assistants. They're all taught by faculty members. With that, we have over 200 plus areas of study that our students are able to take part in, ranging from the sciences to the arts, to business schools, to criminology. You can really take part in any major you would like and reach out to your academic advisor once you're here at UT, if you're still on the fence, maybe coming in undecided, and they'll be able to help you to find what best works for you. We were also voted the number one best location, college location in Florida back in 2020. So hoping to receive that again in 2021. Now we are very big on experiential education here at UT. So we do like for our students to feel like they're getting a hand in either research, internships, or a study abroad program. With that being said, some great examples on this page. Up in the top corner, you can see our nursing students. So we have a mock hospital here on campus. Our nursing students are actually able to interact with these mannequins that are able to simulate real people, their symptoms they may have, they can bleed, they can cry, they say, ow, they can tell you what's wrong, but they also can give birth. So it's pretty crazy the different things that these mannequins can do to help prepare our nursing students before they go into their clinicals in the hospital. Now for our business side of things, we do have a great financial trading center down in that bottom right corner. In the financial trading center, it's a class for our finance students where the university actually provides those students with a sum of real money that they trade in the live stock market. For anyone interested in entrepreneurship, we do have a mock pitch room. It's supposed to emulate the pitch room in the show Shark Tank. So with that, our entrepreneurship students are able to go in, pitch their different ideas while they're in here. And then also we have a pitch contest that every student is eligible to participate in every year. Now, given that we are so close to the Tampa Bay, obviously we have a great marine science program, one of our most popular majors here. We have a marine science field station located about 10 minutes from the university with four research vessels. So you're able to go out on these boats with faculty and staff members, collect whatever you wanna research and then research it back in the labs at the field station or on campus. Lastly, for this side, we do have our fab labs and our whole Furman Center for the Arts that was just recently completed. So in the Furman Center for the Arts, we have these fab labs with state-of-the-art design technology, different dance studios, musical studios, as well as a black box theater for our film and media majors. 
And our tagline here is really love where you live and learn because we want our students not only to love the academic side of things, but also the campus life as a whole and the life in the Tampa Bay area. So as for campus life, we have over 300 different clubs and organizations here at UT. Around 20% of our students are involved in Greek life, while the majority of the rest of the students have a hand in some other organization, whether it be affiliated with their area of study or just a social club that they can join for fun. Our most popular are the Hammock Club, the Beach Club, we also have the skydiving club, which gets a little crazy, um, as well as different academic ones, such as Skull and Bones, for those that are interested in pre-med. We have several different ones for different areas of study. Now, we do have 27 different dining options on campus, and we provide so many different options to try to rotate them out every few years, because we want our students to feel like they are able to eat different things uh, very frequently, and like they're not always eating the same thing every day. As for our dorms here, freshman housing is going to be Jack and Jill style, so no communal bathrooms on campus, a double or triple connected by bathroom to another double or triple, while our upperclassmen dorms are more apartment style with single bedrooms, kitchens, and bathrooms. Now our application deadlines are the same every year. All the deadlines are non-binding and deposits are fully refundable before the May 1st national deadline. So I always recommend applying during early action one, early action two, the latest, because this does open up different opportunities for you as a student here. So if you apply during one of these early application periods, you get notified sooner. You're able to apply for additional things such as additional departmental scholarships or even extra programs such as our President's Leadership Fellow Program or our Spartan Undergraduate Research Experience Program, which allows you to get hands-on research during your first year here at UT. So again, I stress to be able to apply during one of those periods. And for our freshman applicants, we require uh, the application, Common App, UT App, or Coalition App, your official high school transcript, essay, and letters of recommendation. We are SAT, ACT optional through spring of 23 as well, so you do not need to submit one of those if you choose not to. And again, this is my email address for you guys. I am an admissions counselor here at UT, so feel free to reach out with any questions, and I'll drop my information in the chat as well. Thanks, Lindsay, for sharing a little bit more about the University of Tampa. Uh, before I pass things off to our next presenter, I do want to make a quick plug for that Q&A once again. So thank you to those of you who have already been sending questions into our college representatives. Uh, for those of you who have not yet, don't forget that you can send those at any point throughout the session through the Q&A. Um, from here, we'll go ahead and pass things off to the University of Cincinnati. Hi guys, um, my name is Alexis Monroe. I am an admissions counselor at the University of Cincinnati. I don't have a presentation just because we like to talk and keep it more personal with our um, presentations. So the University of Cincinnati, um, we are a very large public institution located in Cincinnati, Ohio. We have about 27,000 undergraduate students and um, most of them do live either on campus or in the surrounding area. So a lot of students, even though we have such a large amount of students, our campus, much like some of the other um, campuses who presented today, it is smaller, it is compact. So it was designed so that students could walk from one end of it to the other one without getting you know, overwhelmed. So you can actually do that in about 15 minutes, depending on how fast of a walker you are. So um, the University of Cincinnati is located in the city of Cincinnati, which is a very up and coming city, but it's also very affordable, which our students I think really appreciate. Um, the university itself is located in Clifton. And like I said, a lot of our undergraduate students either live on campus or they live in the area. So it's created a very young and urban environment, um, much like a college student's oasis. That's what we kind of call it, just because there are so many things that have been built or added to the neighborhood neighborhood to make it one where anything a college student would need is in very walkable distance. Um, so our, our students really appreciate that. Um, at UC, we really much say that we offer that traditional college experience. So we have D1 sports. We actually just accepted an invite to the Big Ten. So we're really excited to be able to have our sports program grow um, and become even bigger. But sports is definitely something that brings our students together. It's something that they can share. Um, if you're not into like sports at that level, we also have a lot of other ways that that you can engage and find your community. So we have over 500 different student organizations for you to choose from. And much like other universities in that first week, they have a big fair where they all set up tables and you can walk around and see what we have to offer. 
Um, we have 16 different residence halls that students can choose to live on, live in. None of them are only for freshmen. They're all just first come, first serve. They're all different. And then we have five different dining halls, and they're all all you can eat. And they're kind of designed where none, no dining hall is going to be serving the same thing on every day. They kind of rotate. So it's nice, a lot of variety. In addition to the dining halls, we do have like restaurants on campus like if you're not feeling the dining food you can have you know chick-fil-a or Cadoba or whatever you're really feeling instead so in addition to that after you've eaten on the all-you-can-eat plan we have a one very highly ranked rec center our students love it faculty and staff love it too um, some of the highlights of it is that it has a lazy river and a rock climbing wall like in addition to like the regular stuff that you would see at a rec center it has all these fun things that our students like to do as well um, so that's kind of like what UC is. Our big thing that we like to talk to students about, though, is our Bearcat promise. So basically, we pretty much emphasize that our students are going to graduate with a degree in one hand and then a career plan in the other. So we have over 350 different academic programs for our students to choose from at the Uptown campus. Um, and so that is really big because our students, they have a lot of variety. You can start experiential, but you can also start directly in any of the programs. Um, some of our more known, or not more known, but our more notable programs are our College of Design, our College of Engineering, our College of Medicine, and then our College Conservatory of Music. So those programs tend to bring students um, from all over the country and then also um, outside of the country as well. So you can get that degree, but then we also, like I said, want you to have a career plan. So all of our students at the University of Cincinnati are actually required to do experiential learning. You have to have at least one experience. And that can be a whole host of things. It can be internships. It could be um, study abroad. It can be co-ops too. Um, Co-oping is big for us because we actually created cooperative education at the University of Cincinnati. So over 100 years ago, we created it. But since then, we've worked to make our program really strong. It's something that definitely attracts a lot of students to UC because, you know, they want to come where and do co-op where co-op was founded. So that is a big thing for us. Um, another reason that we do have a lot of students come to us is because you can get that education, you can get that experience, that resume that's going to help you get the job, but you can do so at an affordable rate. So our out-of-state tuition rates are about 27000 which um, is a pretty good rate for our students. And then we also do have a tiered scholarship program here at the University of Cincinnati. So there are scholarship opportunities all the way from full rides that include um, tuition and housing and everything. And then they kind of tear down after that, down to about like $1,000 scholarships on that last tier. So lots of scholarship opportunities for our students. Um, in terms of how do you come to UC, you know, what do you need to do? We are a Common App school. So you're going to apply through the Common App. Um, for us, for fall 2022, test scores are optional for many programs. Um, letters of recommendation are optional, and we actually are accepting unofficial transcripts as well, just to make the process as seamless as possible. Um, all of our application, like our application, all of the materials, they need to be in by December 1st in order to be considered for some of our more competitive programs. Um, so make sure you get those in. And that is everything about University of Cincinnati. Thank you so much, Alexis. Uh, I, I definitely learned some things about University of Cincinnati in your presentation as well, so I appreciate it. Um, next, we'll head on over to our final institution of the session, which is Rutgers, New Brunswick. Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Shah. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen and get started. Can everyone see that? Looks good. All right, great. Um, so my name is Alicia Shah. I'm an admissions officer on the recruitment and outreach team. Um, I've been with I've been with the university for about five and a half years. Um, I graduated from here as well. I'm a proud Scar Scarlet Knight alum. I love my time here so much. I knew I wanted to come back here and work. I was an academic advisor at School of Engineering um, for almost four years, and then I came over to admissions. So Rutgers, New Brunswick is the main campus uh, at Rutgers. We do have several accolades, including being one of the top 1% universities worldwide. We have over 
25 programs ranked nationally, top 25 nationally, number 23 public school in the nation, and we are the most diverse school in the Big Ten Conference. Welcome to the Big Ten University of Cincinnati. Um, we have over 175 research centers and institutes. Um, students as early um, as their first year can get involved in research opportunities. Um, you know, there are a whole host of ways for students to get uh, paid and unpaid exposure to the research process. And we do have over 750 student clubs and organizations. For some reason, if you can't find something that interests you, um, you are able to create your own uh, club and organization. So New Brunswick is nicknamed the Hub City because it is connected to a lot of other larger cities by plane, train, and automobile. We do have um, NJ Transit right on campus. You don't have to drive anywhere to get to the train. You can just walk right to the train station and it is part of the Northeast Corridor. You'll be in New York City in 45 minutes and Philadelphia in about 90 minutes. Um, we're also about three hours from Baltimore, four hours from DC and five hours from Boston. I always like to point that out because we know that students like to go visit their friends at other universities or different family members. Um, so you are pretty accessible to, to these larger cities as well. Um, we're also about a half an hour from the Newark airport and you can access the airport uh, through NG Transit. Uh, we're right next to the New Jersey Turnpike as well. So we're very easily accessible. Um, students will pursue internships in New York City during the fall and spring semesters because we are pretty close by. Um, there are also a lot of opportunities for students to get um, internships and co-ops right in New Brunswick. Johnson & Johnson is housed in New Brunswick as well as Colgate Palmolive is close by. Bristol Myers Squibb and L'Oreal are also close by. <clears throat> so this is a great way to visualize how the New Brunswick campus is set up. Um, it's actually spread out over two cities. So Bush and Livingston are in Piscataway and then from College Avenue down um, is located in New Brunswick. Um, Bush is where you're gonna find School of Engineering, the Rutgers Football Stadium, um, an 18 hole golf course and the Ernest Mario School of Pharmacy. Livingston is where you're gonna find Rutgers Business School and the Rack, which is where the basketball team, gymnastics teams and wrestling teams compete. Um, and you're gonna get more of like a suburban type feel on these campuses. College Avenue, you're gonna get a city type feel um, for this campus. And this is where School of Arts and Sciences is housed. Then you're gonna see the Rutgers train station in downtown New Brunswick, which is also where Edward um, J. Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy and the School of Nursing are located. And we also have two um, hospitals affiliated with Rutgers, uh, which is where a lot of students will do uh, their clinical rotations. Uh, Douglas was our women's only campus, but they did open it up to where men could stay there after I had graduated. Uh, but they do have um, a lot of women's leadership focused events still, which is great. And Cook is more of like our agricultural type campus. We do actually have a farm. So that's where a lot of animal science majors um, will enroll into. We also have a lot of STEM majors um, on Cook campus, including uh, food science, nutrition, and biochemistry. So this is a great way to understand how uh, the, the New Brunswick campus is laid out. Um, even though we have about 38,000 undergraduate students, it doesn't feel like there's 38,000 undergraduate students on campus at all time um, because it's so spread out um, and across two cities. And students are able to access all of these campuses through the Rutgers bus. Um, this, the, the bus is included in your student fees. You pay that once and then you're riding the bus for the for uh, the academic year. Uh, there's no fee anytime you get on the bus and when your friends and family come to visit, there's no fee for them either. So it's great. <clears throat> so for student life, as I mentioned, we have over 37,000 undergraduate students. We are the most diverse school in the Big Ten. Um, about a fifth of our students do come from out of state and around the world, which is great. Um, and 27% of our students are first generation, meaning they're the first in their family to go to college. And about 23% of students are an underrepresented minority. 
Um, we have 24 NCAA Division I sports. Uh, so we are very active uh, in our athletics. I don't know if anyone's watching or following football, but it was really nice to win three games in a row and we put up a good fight against Michigan. So we'll see what happens this weekend. Uh, we have over 80 fraternities and sororities and a lot of ways to get involved on a philanthropic level. The picture in the middle is from Rutgers University Dance Marathon, where they've raised over $9 million for kids with cancer and blood disorders. So there's always something to do on campus, um, aside from you know, getting a lay of the land while you're a first year student and navigating your schedule. I think your biggest um, thing to get adjusted to is figuring out how many events you can fit in in one day and one weekend. Um, so for first year schools, these are the schools you're going to apply to when you submit your application. These are the schools in red. Um, you can apply to up to three schools and you're gonna get three different admissions decisions. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> Some popular majors are biology, business, the six year PharmD program, the direct entry nursing program, animal science, the seven year bachelor's of science DPT program, theater arts and our five years bachelor's, bachelor's master's education program. Um, we do have a 93% first year retention rate of so students who are enrolling at Rutgers want to stay and finish out their degree. We have uh, career fairs every semester, which are great for the students to participate in. Our application due dates are always the same, November 1st for early action and it's non-binding. December 1st for regular decision. Um, and we are not, um, <clears throat> we're not on Common App. So you would apply through uh, Rutgers website or coalition application. And the university is test optional again. So you would submit your self-reported academic record after you apply. Um, we do accept fee waivers, but the application fee is $70. And then you would receive an admissions decision by mid-March. I'm gonna put my email address in uh, the chat box and go nights. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about uh, Rutgers New Brunswick. Um, we do have time for a very quick lightning round series of questions with our um, presenters. So I'll encourage everyone to quickly turn on their video once again, and we will go uh, around Robin. Uh, we'll have you answer in the order that uh, you all presented and we'll have everyone share a very quick tip or trick what advice would you give someone going through the college search process i think i was first we'll start with the start with me um the big advice i would give is just take advantage of all of the resources that the school can offer you in terms of researching the school um, take advantage of all of like these kind of events and the one-on-one -on -one events um, for the schools um, and reach out to the admissions department if you have any questions um, you know we're we're that's our job we're here to support you um, so that that would be my biggest advice just uh you know ask ask your questions <laughs> yeah i definitely echo all of that and i think another big one is to get in touch with your regional recruiter or regional admissions counselor you'll notice that a lot of us work specifically with new jersey students so definitely reach out to us um, we kind of are like your first point of contact and we're really here to help you guys. I think my advice would be to tour the campuses that you're interested in. Uh, I think that's the best way to kind of see if the campus is going to be a best fit for you. Um, shameless plug, we are offering campus tours Monday through Friday and some Saturdays. So you can just go to our website and see uh, what times are available. Um, to echo that to what Ashley said, definitely tour the campuses so that you can get a feel or try to tour during um, while classes are in session so you can get a feel of what campus life is like on a normal day. But also I'd say don't be afraid to branch out. Um, if you see a school that you really like but you are afraid you're, you're not sure about the, air, the area being so far away from home or such, just don't be afraid to apply and utilize the admissions department to help you all during the process. Okay, so like two of the things I was going to say you guys said. So um, yeah, definitely visit. Be um, willing to, you know, 
explore universities that maybe you're, you're not used to, but then also busy campus, but we also, all of us probably have a lot of events that are made especially just for prospective students. So check out what events we have um, because we try to pack as much helpful stuff into those as we can. So check those out too. I agree with everyone. <laughs> um, yes, definitely tour the campus. You know, it, um, the campus can look a lot different in real life versus in pictures and on a website to so make sure you get a feel of, um, of how the campus is. And if you can really see yourself on the campus, then I think it would be a good fit for you to apply. And we are also doing campus tours and we have a virtual tour set up as well that you can do from your phone. Wonderful. Thank you all so much uh, for, for participating in that quick little, uh, you know, lightning round there, but also a big thank you to all of you for joining us for this session. Um, we hope you found the information helpful. There will be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your screen as soon as we wrap up here. If you don't mind taking the extra second to fill that out, it's very helpful for us to get some feedback. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are two more hours of sessions after this session concludes, so feel free to sign up for more if you haven't already. And this session was recorded, and the recording will be available at strivescan.com slash Burlington within the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you once again to all presenters. Thank you once again to all of you, and I hope that everyone has a wonderful rest of their evening. <laughs>